let me show you how you can immediately jump directly into building advanced outposts in Starfield. If you follow the steps in this base building guide, you're going to have an endless amount of experience and money. Our first stop will be in the Sol system at the planet Mars. Land at the mining colony down on Cydonia. Head inside, run down the stairs on the left hand side, there will be the UC exchange. Here is a list of resources, you're going to want to buy absolutely every single one of these from Patrick. The main reason why we're here though is to snag up all of his drilling rigs as well as the isotropic coolant. Our last stop is in New Atlantis, we're going to want to hit up the UC distribution as well as Jameson Mercantile. You'll be overweight at this point, so just open up your ship's inventory and then stuff all the resources inside. There are three skills you need rank for in, let me show you how to rank them up quickly. Outpost management is super duper easy to max out. Ultimately what you want to do is land on six different planets, throw down just one habitation module, and throw down one cargo link. Once you're done with each planet, delete everything to get your resources back. The last two challenges are super easy, you just need to build eight sanitation robots and then ten of the crew stations, destroy them to get your resources back. Once you're rank 4, all of your outpost extractors will produce twice as fast, and that is glorious. Outpost engineering is literally the easiest one to max out to level 4. All you have to do to max it out is build 80 pieces of different furniture or decorations. Now don't let that scare you because it's super easy. You can literally build until you run out of materials, destroy absolutely everything, and then build even more until you max it out. Once outpost engineering is completely maxed out, well, you're going to be spending half the amount of materials to construct the exact same items, and, you know, can't go wrong with that. Maxing out planetary habitation is as easy as just plopping down a base computer and a habitation module on 18 different worlds. At this point, you should already be ranked 2 by maxing out outpost management. Maxing out this skill will let you build on the most extreme planets out there in Starfield. Just like with the other two skills, destroy absolutely everything to get your resources back. Once you have those three skills to level 4, you're ready to build your very first base. Head over to the system of Narion, it's right next to Alpha Centauri, and you're going to go to the moon of Androphon. Now, I already have a crappy iron and aluminum base that everybody shows all over YouTube. Now, we can do much better than that. We can actually get all five of the resources, but I'm going to settle for at least the main four. Helium, aluminum, iron, as well as beryllium. On Androphon, iron only spawns in the mountain's biome. All of the other remaining resources like the beryllium, the aluminum, the H3, as well as that exotic element, all spawn in craters. If you want to be able to see where the exotic element is, you will need to have scanning level 4. Ultimately, what you want to do is create a landing zone where the biomes touch each other. The best way to do this is to kind of find the border and then barely move your landing destination over and see if it changes, and if it does, definitely going to find the border. On my first try, I didn't quite nail it, but I can already tell that's the border over there. See how you notice there's a bluish colored biome and a red one here? Now all you have to do is run around the border until you find all the elements you want, then plop down your base computer. Before you get too excited, make sure you have enough aluminum, beryllium, iron, as well as helium-3. Because if you don't, you won't be naming this base, you'll actually destroy it and move it slightly to fine-tune it where all the resources are in the circle. You can enter build mode through the base computer, or you can pull out your scanner and then just go into outpost mode. Toggling your view will make it much easier to build. Before I throw down any extractors or build anything, I like to start out with my habitation unit. I love to do most of my base building from inside the hab, so let's toss an airlock on there. The very first thing you need to place in here is an industrial workbench, and if you have any research left, make a research lab. At every single base that produces resources, you always want to make a sanitation mini-bot. If you have a companion with you, make sure you throw down two beds, because daggone it, sometimes they lay in it. Time to place some extractors. Now, we're not going to be using the crappy level 1s. We're actually going to be using the level 2 commercial variety. The level 3 ones are kind of overkill. If we were only using the level 1 extractors and considering that most of the resources outside the circle, we'd basically be screwed. But we only need to make 5 or 6, so we're golden. Let's place down some level 2 beryllium extractors. Now, I was kind of concerned about that. I was hoping to get 5 extractors in here, but honestly, I don't think I can do that. I can only get 4. 
When placing your aluminum extractors, make sure you place the exact same amount as you placed for the iron. Now, since I placed six, I'm gonna be placing six of these. Last but not least, let's plop down our helium-3 extractors, and man oh man, we're gonna have plenty of helium-3. It's time to add power collection to our base, and the only way to do that on Androphon is to add a whole bunch of solar arrays or solar domes. At this point, you can start plopping down the large solid storage containers. Just keep in mind in the beginning, you only have enough supplies to throw down a couple boxes for aluminum and iron. Don't sweat it too much though, because here in just a little bit, since we have a workbench here, we can make all the adaptive frames and we're going to have tons of iron and aluminum. If this is your very first base build, you most definitely won't have enough supplies to build the beryllium boxes or these gas storage containers. After the wiring's all done, I'll show you how to quickly get supplies. In order to start wiring, just hover over the item you want to wire and then click the create upload link. I'm now going to wire every single one of the exact same type of extractors to the exact same box. Main goal is to keep all of our resources separate. I'll be doing the exact same thing with the beryllium, although I'm going to add it to the stack that isn't as huge because we don't need beryllium as much as we need a whole boatload of iron as well as aluminum. You're going to need a ridiculous amount of adaptive frames, and that's going to cost you iron as well as aluminum. And I can't believe I just wired that to the beryllium box. That's totally going to screw everything up. Later down the line, I end up figuring that up, but definitely try to keep your resources separate. Helium-3 is super duper important to our master plan. We'll be using that Helium-3 inside of an interstellar cargo link to ship all of this aluminum, beryllium, and iron to our main base. Let's now link all of our storage containers together. Just create an output link from one box to the next over and over until you get to the end of the line. This will cause the last box in your chain to fill up first, and since I always like to know which is the last box, I'm going to create a second level here and link them together. Let's now get all these beryllium storage containers linked up as well as all these aluminum containers as well. I'm going to definitely be expanding the aluminum as well as the iron. And even though we're mostly using this helium-3 to get all of our stuff shipped over to our main base, I'm still going to be using this in crafting as well. In the very beginning, you're not going to have enough adaptive frames, iron or aluminum to make the base as big as I've done. So after you've built a couple boxes and a few extractors for the iron and aluminum, just sleep in your bed for a few hours. Sleeping in a bed will give you a plus 10 experience bonus to your crafting. And as long as you build enough power for your base, you're going to wake up with a bunch of iron and aluminum. In order to expand your base as big as you want, you want to hit up your workbench and you're going to be making like a lot of these adaptive frames. I'm probably going to make several hundred now. Feel free to make this base as big as you want. Once I upped my rookie numbers and all the storage containers I have, it's now time to build some interstellar cargo link systems. We're going to need to have at least four of these. If you don't feel like shipping the helium-3 to your main base we're going to build later, then you can settle for three. Build a gigantic landing pad for your ship and then place it in a convenient location. We'll need to fuel our interstellar cargo links with helium-3. Run a line from your last box of your H3 to that single box on the landing pad. I also want to ship some H3 to my main base, so we're going to plug that into the outgoing red box. Let's quickly get fuel to the rest of our landing pads. Seriously, they won't work without fuel. From your last box on each stack, you want to plug those into the outgoing boxes on your cargo links. Once you have the base that helps you build all other bases in the game, head over to the Soul System and now you're going to be making your main base on Venus. We'll be looking for a seam between both biomes. Now copper and nickel are going to spawn in the hills and lead as well as the exotic material are going to be spawning in the rocky desert. So we need to find an area right in between those two areas. Venus is actually quite hard to spot the differences in biomes. So make sure you do this in the daylight. Nah, sorry for the jittery footage. My computer randomly shut down, which corrupted my MP4 file. Ended up recovering it, but as you can see, the footage is horrible. So I build up my base. I got a bunch of storage for cobalt and nickel as well as lead. Anyways, I'm going to need to hook up these solid storages. So run a line from your green box and run it to the very first box in your chain. We're going to need to build at least three sets of these. Let's get our cargo links linked up, and it literally is as easy as just selecting which one you want and clicking a button. As soon as you click the button on these interlink systems, you're definitely going to know that the ships are coming in because you'll hear the engines firing within just a few seconds of clicking that button. 
if these delivery ships don't immediately start flying in after you link the cargo links together, well, that generally means one thing. You forgot to fuel your cargo links with helium-3. It is worth mentioning that you only need to fuel your cargo links on the sending side. Here at our main base, we won't need to fuel our cargo links. Our main base is only two-thirds of the way set up, but we still can make experience here. We do have iron and aluminum being sent here via the cargo link, so you can make adaptive frames here if you like. Ultimately though, it's way better to just tap into our endless supply of cobalt and nickel that we have here on Venus and just make a whole bunch of these magnets. The cargo links will only fill up your storages during gameplay. Sleeping and stuff like that won't do it, so yeah, I'm gonna make a bunch of these magnets because we can sleep and just refresh our storage right away. Man, that like literally took me four minutes of solid spam clicking to get through all of that cobalt nickel. Well, it's time to sleep to refresh our storages. We can do this as many times as we want. I mean, you know, it's totally filled up. Might as well do it again for another four minutes of endless spam clicking, getting a bunch of experience as well as a bunch of these magnets we can sell for boatloads of money. At my level, it's brutal gaining experience this way, but for you, if you're like under level 100, you're going to get tons of levels for creating these magnets. And in two spam craft sessions, we made almost 65k of them. Once I get a massive stash of these magnets, I like to head over to the Trade Authority and then just pawn them off to this lady here at Alpha Centauri. Now, sadly, we can't sell all 300 and some thousand worth at a time. We can only sell 11,000 or less, and, you know, that's close enough. I'll just take all of our money right now. Now, you can sit in the chair for 48 UT hours and refresh the vendor and keep selling it over and over again, or you can just throw it on the ground right here because it's never going to go away and just come back and sell whenever you want. It's time to build another base. Now, we're going to be going after two super important elements, so head over to the system of Jaffa and then go over to the planet Jaffa 1. Compared to the last two bases we built, this is going to be super duper easy. Now, we're after tungsten as well as titanium, and both of those appear in the exact same biome, so unless you want to be psycho and get other elements, just worry about these two. At this point, you already know how to build a far more complex base, so we're just going to skip the base building for this one. Tungsten, titanium, and lead are all in the exact same biome. We're not going to have to worry about any of the lead, but you can just plop down a base anywhere in these areas and you're going to be good to go. You won't be building any cargo links here, although I highly recommend that you build a landing pad for your ship. The last major base we're going to be building, which will include cargo links, is in Latana. You'll want to hit up planet Latana 7. Now this place is really glorious because it has helium-3. We're also going to be snagging up all the silver, copper, as well as the gold. This will be another one of those multi-biome bases. The silver only spawns in the rocky desert, and the copper and gold is going to spawn in the plateau. The base as well as the storage system for all the gold, silver, copper, as well as the H3 are all set into place. Let's get these cargo links placed down. FYI, I canceled sending H3 to my Venus base just so I could have enough room to send all of these items here, the gold, the silver, and the copper, to Venus just so we can use it for crafting. Basically, you can only have six cargo links at one base. Time to fuel our cargo links. Now seriously, don't forget to do this. I've forgot before, so if you do, don't feel bad. Just make sure that you plug all these outgoing boxes into the correct box, which is the red box, or they won't ship anything. Back at our main base on Venus, now it's time to throw down three interstellar cargo links here. And after we get all these placed down, I'm going to have to build three sets of these storage containers so I can actually have all the stuff delivered there. I have the beginnings of my three rows of boxes here. Since we want to receive product, make sure you run the line from the green box to the very beginning of your storage containers in that row. Sometimes the wire will act weird and want to actually go from the red box to your storage containers and that's literally going to do you no good because your ships won't ship anything here if you do that. Expanded the base, you know, because I couldn't help myself. Right now we're sitting on six different elements and we have three ready to go as long as we link up our cargo links. Let's talk about cargo links again. Now, you can generally refresh all your elements just by sleeping in a bed and passing UT time. However, it doesn't work that way with cargo links. 
the best way to ensure that your cargo is constantly delivered to your main base is, well, just to play the actual game. Go out and do the things and your base will charge up all the way. And when it does, you're ready to make the mega experience. At this point, the base is looking really good and I have plenty of storage. If you want, you can build one of these transfer containers like right next to your main landing pad and then hook up all of the last boxes to the actual container. Now, this thing fills up really fast, like it only holds 400, so yeah. Chances are the very first box I plugged that into filled it up all the way. Anyways, I don't use this very often, but it does grant access to all your storage from your ship. It's now time for all of our hard work to pay off. Just make sure you take a nap for an hour so you get bonus experience. The very first thing you're going to be crafting is your old friend adaptive frames. Keep crafting them until you completely run out of materials. Next up to batter the magnets, and you guessed it, craft as many as you can until you run out of materials. Look for the Tau Grade Rio stats, and you guessed it, craft everything you can. The final product you'll be crafting is Com Relays, and these things are worth twice the experience and a whole bunch more money. Oh man, now that was a nice chunk of experience. So here's kind of a cheese to max out your fitness. Just get overweight, then sleep for an hour, wake up, walk a little tiny bit, and sleep again. In no time, you'll max your fitness, which will give you more oxygen, and as long as your health ticked once, you can actually max out your rejuvenation as well. I'm really hopeful that this Starfield base building guide helped you to create an endless experience farm as well as an endless amount of money.